Hi, welcome back. My name is Yaku, I am a goldsmith and this is my workshop. And as per usual, this is a video series of explaining how we do things in this workshop. And we are so happy to have you here, thank you very much. I'm fighting the Platinum today. It becomes a battle between two wills. Platinum has its character and I have my experience and the character of Platinum is gonna battle the experience of me, which will result in a, in a lovely unique ring with big diamonds. That's what we're doing. I carve a wax model. We might understand exactly what it is that we're making, but many times when you're talking to a customer about measurements like six or seven millimeters, they don't quite understand what kind of volume that's gonna present on the finger. So by carving a wax model, it's really just to get that final visual experience of what they can anticipate when making the ring by hand. We're gonna need a lot of platinum for this, so I'd ordered 50 grams of platinum, six by six, uh, which is quite a chunk of platinum, but there's gonna be a lot of manipulating to this metal, so I need to have a lot behind me to work with. I need the ends of the ring to come together once it's bent and to house two pear-shaped colored diamonds. And I can actually take the wax model from here and measure exactly what I've created in wax and then bring it over to the metal itself. And there's a seven millimeter height on it and there's almost a 10 millimeter width on it. So obviously six by six isn't gonna cut it. I somehow have to create those parts on the edge so that I can house the stones. I'm looking at the stones and giving myself a 10 to 12 millimeter gap on either end. I'm leaving these parts completely alone because remember I want to build these parts up. I flatten them up just slightly to give me a little bit of width and then from there onwards the centerpiece being six millimeter is going to six by six is obviously far too heavy for a ring shank. I'm opening up the rolling mill, inserting the ring, closing it up, tightening that space, rolling it up to that 12 millimeter, 10 to 12 millimeter edge and back the other way again, opening it up again, turning it and doing exactly the same, roll it up to that point and back to the other point. And this way what's happening is I'm compressing only the middle part of the shank. So I'm thinning out the shank and leaving the edges to be flared out. I'm looking for that sort of tulip look. It needs to flare out naturally. And you can achieve that by doing exactly this with the roller. So as I'm going with this, the whole time I'm negotiating with the metal. It's doing what I wanted to do, but it's slowly moving towards it. I'm now taking my goldsmith's hammer and I'm shaping it and bending the point and flattening the top. This way I can see what I'm working with. Once I've flattened it to a point where the stone can be seated, I can then measure the height that I'm looking for. Remember, I'm looking for a six to seven millimeter height, which is quite a lot, but I need to achieve that. So once I've hammered it and I've got my flat surface and it's not quite there, I'm going to use the wire to fuse on top of the actual platinum, thereby building it up to get my, my height as well as my width. Once I've bent it round, and I've taken a bit of effort here, this is the wrestling part I was talking about, it's not easy bending a piece of metal which is six or seven millimeters thick, but it is possible. You know that your ring is lying there inside that little shape that you've got, that rough shape, it's in within that, you just need to clean it up. This is the point I'm at right now, then I cut the ring. Why? Because I want access from this side where the rings would have come past each other to come in here and really shape it the way I want it to. It's also interesting to see that you're actually making exactly the same thing and you're copying exactly the same thing. When you put them together, they become one. We have no footage for that, by the way. We've got no footage for that. But I promise you, that's exactly what I've done. <laughs> I promise you. Why don't we have any footage of that? It is December. <laughs> it's like a week away from Christmas, so please excuse the uh, lack of footage. I then took the ring, I marked out where I believe the stone should be. I marked a line, a little parallel line. I made these about a 1.4 millimeters wide every time because the stones that are going in there were one pointers, so they were 1.25, 1.3 millimeters, but also gave it a little bit of space because there's a bit of cut work to get the set work done.
and then I inlaid these wires which were one, one prepared to 1.4 millimeters. I just wrapped them around there, tightened it up, made sure that they're nice and tight and then soldered them into the platinum. They stood out because half of the wire was then flush with the platinum, the other half stood out. And the next thing I did is I would, just, I would file it off with a rough file, going to a smoother one, and then using my Moore's disc just to make sure that the surface is perfectly flush. So you're still getting your shape. We've not disturbed the shape in any way, except you have red gold inlays right now. And the interesting thing about that is once the stones, the black diamonds are gonna go into that, the, um, the red gold, the grooves that I've inlaid for the red gold will become the channels for the stones. So you won't see any of the red golds except for the little claws holding the stones. It's just a little feature that I've added to it to make it interesting and unique. Yeah, so now it's the set with me. The more time, and I can't stress this enough, the more time you spend on preparing this area where you're gonna set the stone, the easier the set work will be. In conclusion, you don't have to take a particular step to get to a a particular result. There's many ways of getting to this result. I did this because I really enjoy the fight, I really enjoy the battle and it's also sort of a, the unknown for me and I need to go and make it known. If you've got any suggestions you know where to pop them. It's wonderful making these videos, we love it, we're so enthusiastic about it. We're so tired, we're cool. we need help. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>